I never thought that I'd be a full-time filmmaker. Are you kidding? Never imagined it. I'll get emotional even talking <laughs> about it. Never imagined it because I couldn't see it and no one had ever done that before. Oscar-nominated director and producer Ava DuVernay is a trailblazer, a rabble-rouser, an agent of change who made history as the first ever black female director nominated for an Oscar for her film Selma, chronicling Martin Luther King Jr.'s campaign for civil rights. It is unacceptable that they use their power to keep us voiceless. Catch Oprah Winfrey there? If you missed her, just check out DuVernay's Instagram, where you can find the two powerhouse collaborators and friends. Joining forces on the series Queen Sugar for Oprah's network. While DuVernay's production company, Array, continues fighting to open doors and increase opportunities in Hollywood. For over a decade now, DuVernay has been dedicated to telling and amplifying stories of black and racialized experience, breaking ground all the while. There was no precedent for anything that I'm doing right now. Mm -hmm. There was no black woman filmmaker that I could look to that was consistently making films. Even as a little girl growing up in Compton, Los Angeles, DuVernay wanted to tell stories. Now, I talked to my friend J.J. Abrams or Mr. Spielberg, and at that age, they had cameras. Right. So they were telling their <laughs> stories with cameras. But I didn't have cameras. I didn't even think about that. I told my stories with Barbies. That's right, That's told me Barbie dolls. Barbie. Because my sisters and I would make full day-long stories where my mother would have to say, stop, stop playing <laughs> the Barbies. Dialogue, little houses. They were living yeah. life. Flash forward to today, DuVernay's gone from playing with plastic to directing record-breaking features such as the surreal sci-fi adventure, A Wrinkle in Time, and 13th, a documentary connecting slavery to the prison system. We now have more African Americans under criminal supervision than all the slaves back in the 1850s. On this day. All of it leading up to her latest and most challenging project, Origin. He couldn't have been the only one who felt something tragic was happening. Based on the award-winning book by Pulitzer Prize-winning journalist Isabel Wilkerson, Origin connects the dots between racism and discrimination in America and hierarchies of inequality in India and Nazi Germany. You've already done so much in your work looking at racism, looking at how it divides. I would have thought, like, there's, you've done that enough. And yet mm. you're like, no, I'm going to go deeper. Mm. What was it about this subject matter, that book that you said, I am going to find a way to tell this impossible tale. I think it's the interconnectedness of it, because mm -hmm. so much of my work before had been very centered on the African-American experience. This one, though, connected our experience to the experiences of others in different times, in different places around the world. How are we connected to Nazi Germany? How are we connected to the caste system in India and other systems where folks are put on a scale mm -hmm. of human dignity? And how does that fit into what we're experiencing right now. We're talking about the systematic murder of six million Jews. At a time when it seems divisions are deepening, Origin seeks to shed light by teasing out connections. While the film was made before the Israel-Hamas war, the Palestinian people are referenced in a list of besieged communities worldwide. That's a loaded topic, but you put it in there intently. Why did that need to be in your film? You know, we talk about uh, one of our, our huge storylines is the love story between uh, a man who was registered in the Nazi party and uh, a Jewish woman that he was in love with. That's how Isabel Wilkerson opens her book. Oppression, it, it touches different kinds of people in different parts of the world. And so these stories and these perspectives are all in the melting pot that is in the film. And that's why the film itself says everything that I want to say about what we're experiencing in this time politically. Perhaps more than any of her projects, Origin hits audiences hard. Usually after the screening I can hear sniffles and yeah. uh, I see people hugging one another. I see people, um, you know, uh, just contemplating what they've seen in a different way than my other work. It's a long way from playing with her dolls in her yard. Now little girls can buy a Barbie inspired by DuVernay herself. The Ava doll is one of six specialty Shiro collection Barbies, meant to honor women whose work inspires young girls by breaking social molds and carving out new paths. 
we actually have, because I have a, I have a daughter, I was going to say young, but she's not so young anymore. We have, we have, never said this to someone I've interviewed before, I have your doll. Really? Yeah, it's quite. <laughs> wow. I mean, as, That's but what a, full, what a full circle moment, though, to go from yeah. being that girl, imagining a world, playing with your dolls, mm -hmm. to now being an inspiration by having a doll of you, the filmmaker in this chair. Sitting, talking about my film on this show with a man whose daughter has the doll. What are we doing here? This is one of the best films of the year. One of the most, certainly the most important film. But Dubonnet's already back tirelessly trying to push her new film into the award season conversation. Origin isn't an easy sell because there's never been a film like it. Part academic exploration, part personal informed by the author's own grief. You okay? This story shouldn't really work, mm -hmm. but you found a way to fuse these kind of two aspects mm -hmm. of the personal and the political mm -hmm. together. I, it's, it's, a, it's a new hybrid. You've kind of created a new genre. I think that I allowed myself and kind of with the independence of the production, uh, freed myself from some of the boxes that I think I had been in. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, blurring the lines between documentary and narrative at some times. Hollywood's really good about building boxes, but you're kind of tearing those things apart. I try. <laughs>